The third of our candidates is land commissioner and former state senator Jerry Patterson. Jerry, how are you? I'm doing great, Michael. I'm going to I'm going to be tight on time so we can get a lot of things in like just as I've done with the other folks. So if I interrupt you, tr- not trying to be mean or rude, uh can you take a minute to tell folks who may not already know who are you, Jerry Patterson? Well, the bio thing is I I was born in Houston, went to public schools, went to Texas A&M, joined the Marine Corps, served 24 years active in reserve, served a tour in Vietnam at the end of the war, flew fighters in the Marine Corps. Uh, then I ran for office unsuccessfully at the initially, and then I was elected to the Texas Senate, beating a 30-year Democrat. And I'm the author of the Texas Concealed Handgun Law, and I've been land commissioner for 12 years. What makes you, Jerry Patterson, uniquely qualified to replace David Dewhurst? Well, I'm going to be straight with you. Uh, my answers are going to be the same, no matter whether it's a, a Dallas Republican women group or a Tea Party group. And my story is not going to change from time to time, venue to venue. And, and I recognize that we have a challenge in Texas and we have a uh, shortage of leadership. And uh, I have a history of doing things that are controversial, getting them done. And uh, in order to lead, you've got to have the respect of those who you seek to lead. I will have that respect. I don't necessarily want them to like me, and I suspect some of the Democrats won't. But I'll have their respect, and we will get what needs to be done done in the Texas Senate. Jerry Patterson, David Dewhurst has been the lieutenant governor for a while, and he is seeking reelection. Why should he not be reelected? You know, every politician has a shelf life, including me. And I think uh, David has reached his shelf life. Uh, the higher the profile of the office, the sooner your shelf life is reached. Uh, David's had a bad year, uh, and it's impacted. Whether he's at blame or at fault or not, it impacts his ability to lead not just the 31 members of the Senate, but, you know, uh, Texas voters and, and, and Texans. Uh, we need an effective guy. Who how, does, how does it impact David Dewhurst's ability to lead that he's had a rough year? Explain that to me. Well, you know, credibility is diminished when you, you know, recently we found out he has a $1.4 million debt from the Senate campaign that hadn't been, uh, you know, obviously had a difficulty in uh, managing the Senate uh, on the last day of the special session. Uh, and, and all those things impact you. Even, you know, whether you're to blame or not, they impact your ability to lead. And so he's had a real rough, rough year. And, and I think, uh, you know, that's, that is a problem. Todd Staples is also running to replace him. Why is Todd Staples, why are you a better candidate than Todd Staples to do that job? Well, I think I'm a better candidate. I think I'd be a, a better lieutenant governor. But Todd is is a, is a fine and decent man. He's an Aggie like me. Uh, and he'd be a good lieutenant governor, but I just think I'd be better. And primarily, and this is no, no fault for Todd, uh, you know, this is my last office, and the liberating thing about serving in your last office is you don't have to worry about the editorial boards or the blogs of the next election. You can do right. You're not handicapped by worrying, which I believe David was at the last session, about how it's going to play out in the next election. Uh, you know, that that's the difference between Todd and I. But, again, he's a good man. I've always said, uh, at least over the last few years, I certainly wanted him when I was a candidate, uh, and never got them. But uh, the Dallas Morning News recently endorsed you of the four. I've told folks, uh, vote against whoever the Dallas Morning News and the Houston oh. Chronicle supports. Why do you think they endorsed you? Well, you know, I have to tell you, I would have agreed with you until they endorsed me. Uh, I don't know why they endorsed me. We had an interview side by side. Todd and I were there. David was on the phone. Uh, Dan uh, was not responsive uh, to showing up at the interview. And I think they just frankly liked the fact that I was straight with them. And we had some disagreements. And as you mentioned in the article, in the endorsement article, I said, we haven't always agreed with Jerry Patterson, uh, but he's straight and he has, uh, you know, he has some specific, he's got, what, he, what they said was, I got meat on the bones when we talk about positions on education, immigration, transportation, and they liked what I had to say on the, on the kind of mundane stuff about government. That's but kind they, of funny because I've always thought you were a skinny fella. <laughs> well, well, uh, <laughs> not intellectually, sir. Not intellectually. Um, Dan Patrick is also a candidate for lieutenant governor. Why is he not the better candidate? Well, because you don't know who you're voting for. Uh, I'll give you an example. In October, in a Tea Party event, Dan said he supported the repeal of the 17th Amendment. And that's a legitimate position. But then when he was asked in January the same question, he said, I never said that. I must have been misquoted. The problem is that we're both on tape. 
I don't think voters should pick somebody who can't keep their story straight from venue to venue and place to place. And Dan, to be honest with you, he's the weakest link on the Democrat ticket, correction, on the Republican ticket. Uh, He will be the lightning rod in November. And, uh, you know, I I think Texas is going to need a strong top to bottom ticket. And I don't underestimate the Democrat nominee for lieutenant governor, Letitia Vandepute. Matter of fact, I think she's more of a challenge than Wendy Davis. A so, number of folks have, have suggested that. In fact, I read a recent report saying she's she's their best chance to win. Why is Dan Patrick such a weak candidate, according to you? Well, you know, he's a strong candidate. But you can be a very strong candidate if you'll say anything. Uh, and voters are, you know, voters are busy. they got a lot of things to do. They're working sometimes two jobs. they got kids playing soccer and baseball and going to school. And they don't have time to do the homework that, you know, they should have. And it's just a fact of life. So the Dan that you see on TV and the Dan that you hear on the radio, and I listened to what he had to say a while ago, and is not necessarily the the Dan that you're going to get. I mean, it's a flip-flop. It's a a consistency uh, issue. Uh, And then the fact that he continues to say that I support amnesty and uh, is pretty telling. And I like the way you asked the question. You said, words are important. The words have meaning. So you're saying that Jerry Patterson, I forgot exactly what you asked. And Dan's response was very telling. It was, well, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know if it was it was on tape. The exact words were that you said that it is foolish not to consider amnesty. Did you say those words? You know, what I said, it, 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 you know, we're going we're gonna to pull the tape up in a minute. What I said, I'm quoted in this morning's Houston Chronicle. And what I talked about in great length was the fact that I served in Vietnam with Marines who were illegal when they enlisted in the Marine Corps. And I said that we ought to provide a legal status for those who serve our country. And I probably, you know, I may have used the words amnesty. I probably said... Commissioner, hold hold with us. We're going to get to that and a lot more. Commissioner Jerry Patterson coming up. This is the Michael Berry Show. The Michael Michael Berry Show. (laughs) 